In the waters of the Thames estuary lies a strange piece of military history. In 1942, German bombers were attacking London and shipping in the North Sea. The Blitz raged and the crucial London docks were being brought to a standstill. The British response was a series of huge structures to defend the East Coast, offshore forts carrying guns, searchlight and radar. There would be seven of them guarding the Thames estuary and East Coast waters, up to 12 miles offshore. All the forts were in place by 1943. They were built and fully equipped at the dockyard at Gravesend and then towed into position by tug. Some of the forts consisted of towers connected by walkways with accommodation, control tower, four gun towers and searchlight. Each fort was manned by 120 men. Other forts were of concrete, sunk onto the seabed, with a full crew already on board, so the story goes. It takes a big imagination to put a thousand men in towers offshore. The man behind them was Guy Maunsell, who also came up with the idea of the Mulberry Harbour, so important at D-Day. But that's another story. Between them, the forts destroyed 22 aircraft, 30 flying bombs and one German e-boat. After the war, the forts were manned by caretaker crews for about 10 years and then abandoned to the waves and the occasional scrap metal merchant. Then in the 1960s, the forts would have a new lease of life as pirate radio stations. The very first Thames Fort Pirate was started by Screaming Lord Such. You are listening to Radio Such. This radio station has only been set up a couple of days, not that even, and we're still not fully organised. A string of what we would now call local radio stations broadcast from the forts to London and Essex. Ten minutes to ten now on Radio City. That's the Basildon Request Show running right through until 11 o'clock. Remember, every Sunday morning it is 9.30 until 11. Here's Tower Radio testing on 216 metres. Tower Radio, your local radio station. Situated nine and three quarter miles off Walton on the Nays. Radio 390 brings you Country Style. The pirate radio era was exciting but short. And by 1967 all the forts were abandoned again. Only Ruff's Tower remained occupied as the self-declared nation of Sealand. That was 40 years ago. What would the forts look like today? When my friend Stuart moved his boat, the Westwood, to Chatham Marina on the Medway, it was a perfect chance to visit the towers. With Colin as third member of the crew, we were ready to go. This wasn't our first trip together. We'd previously done inland and offshore passengers by both sail and steam. On one memorable occasion, we helped Stuart hoist his boat out of the water to change the propeller in the hope of squeezing out another knot of speed. But now we were on our way, emerging through the lock into the Medway and the estuary towards whatever might remain of those forts. Flat out, the Westwood is capable of 20 knots, but that's not counting a full load of crew, fuel and beer. As we get our first glimpse of the fort in the distance, we get the extra excitement of jumping over the wake of a Tilbury ferry. And then there were the forts, spooky, majestic and astonishingly still there, 60 years after they were built. We visited two of the Thames platforms, Red Sands Fort and then Shivering Sands. Until the 1960s the towers still had the overhead gantries in place, although the pirate DJs reported that they were already pretty scary even then, but they're long gone now. Shivering Sands lost one of its seven towers when a ship hit it in 1963. The stumps are visible in the low water. We left the forts and continued east, round North Foreland and into Ramsgate Marina. On our way home we had one final surprising encounter with Pirate Radio when we passed the Radio Caroline ship on a mooring near Chatham. Glorious, but sadly not transmitting. <laughs> 